finally we're at part three of unit six and this will close out the slides for this week and also um, I'll be adding some material at the end about the discussion and assignment. So um, for raising your plants in containers uh, that's almost anything other than field grown. Uh, there's a wide variety of uh, different containers that can be used. Anything from um, uh, whiskey barrels for uh, display on a patio or yard uh, down to the small uh, uh, cell trays um, that are shown in the upper left to um, the terracotta clay pots. Very familiar. Uh, there's many different containers that work f as uh, great um, places to grow plants. Um, each of them has pros and cons like everything we talk about in this class. Um, another uh, container that's gotten a lot of interest lately is uh, used uh, uh, milk jugs. Uh, they can make little uh, mini greenhouses for early plantings out in your garden. Um, and we could go on and on from there. Uh, similarly, there's a variety of growing media, everything from uh, digging up soil in your yard or garden to some of the more um, sterile media, uh, usually soilless. Um, these soilless mixes are uh, ordinarily a mix of different materials, um, usually um, having no soil and therefore um, sterile. Um, most common materials are uh, uh, bark or uh, sphagnum peat moss. Uh, the issue with sphagnum peat moss is that it's harvested from uh, peat deposits and it's um, while peat is still being uh, deposited around the world it is a very slow process and so the um, mining of peat for agricultural and other purposes is not a sustainable um, not a sustainable harvest. Um, other materials that are commonly mixed into uh, soilless growing media include vermiculite. It's uh, a natural mineral uh, also known as mica which is processed uh, until it puffs up into the shape uh, that you see. Uh, it holds uh, moisture and nutrients usually mixed in with other materials. Uh, similarly perlite is a volcanic glass compound that when it heats up it explodes into these little um, white grains that you see. Uh, it's very light and it helps hold um, in soil moisture and lighten uh, potting mixes. When you see uh, seeds at the uh, at the store and you're getting ready to put them in your garden, remember to read the packet. Um, while there's different approaches to sowing seeds, um, usually sowing them in rows helps uh, you keep track of the seeds in larger areas. Although recent uh, publications like uh, square foot gardening and other uh, methods uh, propose uh, uh, sowing seeds in uh, areas rather than in linear rows. Uh, especially when the uh, seedlings are young and gentle, fragile, uh, water them gently um, so as not to wash away the seeds or um, pin the uh, seedling stems to the ground where they will uh, get infected with diseases and die. And then finally, um, uh, it's good to know where you planted things, so um, document with labels uh, that show the species, the variety, and the date planted or you can accomplish uh, the same thing by making maps and keeping records of, of your plantings. After sowing, uh, remember the needs of plants. They need moisture, appropriate temperature, and uh, uh, nutrients. Uh, you don't need to add fertilizers for germination. Um, seeds have what they need in the endosperm to get started. However, um, after they germinate, um, they will need nutrients from the soil, so it's uh, good practice to uh, grow, to include organic material or compost in your soil. Um, and if you um, are not uh, 
philosophically opposed to it, uh, some nitrogen fertilizer um, can be added to help your plants along. Then after germination, that's when the fertilization begins, uh, low levels. Um, these can be added in either um, a um, uh, solution or in uh, slow release pellets. And then a critical, air, uh, critical item of care after germination is hardening off plants. That is giving uh, seedlings exposure to outdoor conditions gradually. Uh, things like wind, uh, sun, and hot temperatures uh, or cold temperatures can all cause um, transplant shock when plants are moved outdoors if, unless they've been conditioned by a period of several days of hardening off. And then uh, if you are uh, transplanting, um, this can be done directly into the field or through bumping up moving plants from small into larger uh, containers. Uh, often transplanting is very manual intensive work so it is uh, um, something to consider when you are um, uh, especially if you have uh, a business that depends on uh, uh, on labor for uh, the uh, growth of your plants best time to transplant is after the first true leaves form. Now you remember from an earlier lesson that the cotyledons are the um, uh, leaves, the early leaves that are uh, in the embryo and uh, the best time is for transplanting is after those leaves have given way to true leaves. Um, water the soil you're going to transplant into Uh, remember to hold the plants, your new plants, by the leaves rather than the stems. They can grow more leaves, but if you uh, if you squish the stem, uh, you've just killed that plant. And then uh, uh, it's good not to tear the uh, seedlings out of the soil or the soilless mix, uh, but instead use a shovel or another tool. I used a spoon, a teaspoon, in the demo I gave in my video. Uh, to pull to pop the seedlings up from underneath and to keep some soil around the roots. And then if the plant has become pot bound, uh, first cut or loosen the roots so that they do not continue to spiral around the plant and uh, basically strangle the plant by the roots. So it's always a good idea when you um, uh, plant a uh, tree or a shrub or a, uh, any kind of plant into your garden soil to go ahead and break the uh, root masses that have formed on the bottom or the sides of the pot and to open up the root system to be able to grow into the new uh, location. This is the last slide and um, it is uh, talking about plat plant patents. Um, did you know that um, individuals can own the patent rights to certain plants and every time someone uses that plant or even makes cuttings from that plant uh, royalties are owed under our um, patent law. Well it's true and here are some examples of um, roses. Uh, the ones that are uh, uh, shown here are uh, uh, examples of or at least the gold glow um, is an example of a plant that is uh, patented. And your assignment um, asks you to look at seed patents and plat plant patents, some uh, websites, and to learn more about this topic and to uh, give some examples of these things and um, similar to last week to provide your opinion on whether you think this is right. Um, doesn't really matter, your opinion doesn't really matter because the Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court recently uh, handed down a decision upholding Monsanto's rights uh, in a case involving their, um, their uh, uh, seeds. Uh, but I think it is um, good to inform yourself and to develop a perspective on these uh, horticultural issues. So that will be the um, discussion for this week. 
the assignment for this week is to submit a draft of your um, class project. So there's fairly detailed instructions about this in the um, uh, enter system under assignment and I hope you'll ask any questions that you need to get answered and uh, get a good start on your on your project. There'll be 50 points for uh, the draft which is due this Saturday. So with that, um, the lecture material and slides for Unit 6 come to an end, and I hope it's been a little more interesting and um, helpful for your um, understanding the material.